uh, the Netflix documentary on on McMahon, Mr. McMahon, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Did you, Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Well, yes and no. So Uh-oh. I didn't learn anything other than I didn't realize that Shane McMahon is as tortured a soul as he is. Yeah, that's uh, the best part of the whole show. Yeah, he's he's a tortured soul, man. That yeah. that poor guy. And you know, Vince with his relationship with men throughout his life, um, it just seems like trauma repeating itself to a certain mm-hmm. degree, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and manifesting in different ways. Yeah. But I would I would argue that it's, it's borderline abusive the way that Shane McMahon has been treated by his father. So that being spelled out the way that it was was pretty eye opening. Um, but other than that, I didn't really learn anything new. It, we, right. we know the Vince McMahon story. We know it's essentially, it is. It's essentially is a WWE story from 1982 on. It's just what it sure. is with extra added effects. Like, you know, excuse me, his, like, his, his, his father, obviously, his mother, which yeah. supposedly allegedly abused him, sexually abused him, apparently. Well, I don't know. Supposedly. I don't know if that's alleged. He said it himself. So, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. Can't, you can't allege that when, when the right. victim is saying it happened to him. Right. <laughs> well, not true. That's, yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah, his relationship with his father and his. They, yeah, they, they didn't get close to his 13 years old, and then how he got the company in '82. But it was a thing that his, his dad didn't believe in him, and all stuff. A lot of shit, man. I mean, to me, that part and then the Shane part you just mentioned, his relationship with Shane McMahon was the most interesting and most um, eye-opening stuff of the entire doc, in my opinion. Sure, sure. you know, um, I, I I think Shane came came away looking like I always thought Shane. I always thought Shane was a good, a good guy anyway. And I felt like after this documentary, he came out even a better guy, in my opinion. Well, he, he definitely came out looking like a sympathetic figure. Absolutely. And you, you're ninety nine percent of the people who talk about Shane McMahon are only going to say positive things about him. But this, is, this is what I'll say: uh, be careful, folks, with your your idol worship in the way that you're always looking to put somebody over, because these are human beings and they're flawed. Uh, Shane McMahon does not have a spot spotless record <laughs> you know what i mean he's right. he's gotten himself into some pretty bad situations that i know of and i've spoken directly with people who've been on the receiving end and it's bad um it's possible that there are ndas that shane is involved in as well and we'll see whatever comes of that but my point is don't don't act as if this guy is the second coming because he's not now with that said i do believe that it's abusive the way that finch treated him no question mm-hmm. about it, you know, and, and really pitting Shane and Stephanie against each other, which I just think is horrific. It's not something that a parent should do with their children. Well, it's clear that Stephanie's more more like Vince than Shane is. It's clear, personality wise. Sure, sure, hundred percent. You know, yeah, hundred percent. Um, a couple of things in that documentary that stood out. Obviously, the the Benoit tra- tragedy was a massive turning point for the company and the way they do things. Um, I wasn't watching the product at the time, but I remember at the time when it happened. When he uh, obviously the the, the the horrible tragedy of Benoit and and, and, and his family went out, and being the scene watching the news at the time, I, you know it was a big deal. But was I didn't think it would be as big a deal as it was until years later when I started watching the you know going get back into into wrestling again and seeing everybody's reaction to him and how they treat him and all this stuff and his legacy. Um, but that was a massive turning point that I learned a lot more about the in the ins and outs of. How they treat his CTE and all this kind of stuff, and and I, I don't give Vince credit for this. He at least more than the NFL and more of the other other like Premier League soccer, maybe at least made the attempt to learn the learn about the disease. Did he more than the NFL? <clears throat> I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I, 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 I here's here's what I know. What Vince McMahon was concerned and really WWE and, and as they should be, they were concerned that this whole concussion issue was going to basically take the company out. So yeah. they bought, they bought Chris Nowinski off. They're the oh. ones who, who put the money in for his organization to continue to exist and do their research. Right. Now those folks are supposed to be independent. So the fact that you're giving him the money that bothers me very much. And that lets me know that there was never a fair and transparent situation going on there as right. a result of that. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, well, how many other wrestler brains has, has that organization gotten since the answer is zero. Why is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It should be easier to get it, especially when you got that affiliation, but 
is WWE pulling the purse string so that they can, you know, play uh, defense, so to speak, and, and prevent things from, from getting out the way that it should? Who knows? But who did knows? it bother you? Did it bother you that Stone Cold Steve Austin said on record that uh, he's uh, not a CT guy? Yeah, I was bothered. I was bothered very by much. That. I was bothered very by much. The, the, the ignorance of that. If I'm very ignorant. But you got to you got to remember. Here's another guy who who's not spotless, and we can't idol worship him. This guy has multiple domestic uh, violence charges on his record. So when we yeah, when we start looking at it, each of his previous wives have gone on record saying that he abused them. So what do we what do we want from this guy who his entire legacy and everything that he has? is owed to WWE and Vince McMahon. Of course, he's going to toll the company line. He's not going to go too far off the reservation. He can't. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, that's just the... Yeah. We, we got to stop exalting these folks. Rick, Rick Flair. Rick Flair is one of the most influential people in my life. I grew up watching this guy. I love the fact that he was never the biggest or the strongest, but he found another way. He could talk. He, 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 could, he could continue to, to dedicate himself to being the best. And through hard work, it paid off. But there's a lot of lessons of what not to do. Of course, we start talking about the man behind the gimmick. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. so it's like we, we got to stop idol worshiping these folks because here's the reality situation. They are very flawed human beings. There's no question about it. Every single one of them, every wrestler you could ever think of is flawed as hell, just as much as anybody else in any other walk of life. So we have to put it in perspective. I was surprised how much Hogan was Hulk Hogan was actually featuring in the documentary too. Well, him and Vince are very close to this day. Absolutely, they're very very close, and and they have every reason to be close. They made each other, of course. You know what I mean? It, and 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 like Hogan said in the documentary, I think Vince trusts me more now because I can't go out there and compete against him. <laughs> so that's a good, that's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. Like you know, what's funny though. Like I know a lot, a lot of it too. What people is like the separating of the artist and the art, all that kind of thing. But Vince, I feel like is of all the people I've ever followed that had have had tortured situations in the past, whatnot. I feel like with Vince McMahon, it's, it's probably the easiest person for me to actually separate the two because I can acknowledge Vince McMahon as work ethic. No one had a better work ethic for a guy of, of his position in any form of life that I've ever seen than Vince McMahon. The guy built a company. You know, took it to places where where we never thought it would, it would go. You know, didn't give a shit about where who he fucked over to do it. Was very regressive with how how he did it. Protected his company, all that. Ultimate man, complete scumbag, an asshole, a complete. You know, dirt. You know, you you, you name you name the adjective. It, it it applies to this man. But I've never felt tortured by that because, you know. I'm watching the I'm watching the product. I'm not watching the Vincent Man. There, there isn't, but yeah, yes, there's a, there's a tie to the two, but then there really isn't. Like, I'm here to watch Seth Rollins wrestle, not Vincent Man wrestle. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been able to come to terms with Vince in the fact that yeah, I'm appreciative of Vince Man, the man who built the company that I've always been a fan of for 40 years, almost almost 40 years, but also unacknowledged clear as day that he's always been a very shady character at, 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 at best. Do you, 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 you ever find yourself having like tortured feelings by this uh, as long term? No, nah, not at all. Not okay. at all. And I, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, EJ. I think that <clears throat> our society and where we are uh, at this stage as a, as a collective human beings, we have allowed ourselves to be so fragile and so unrealistic when it comes to analyzing life, you can't sit here and tell me that every single person that has ever done anything that you consume is a good person. Agreed. In more cases than not, they're pretty terrible people that you probably would never want to have over for a beer or to bring around your family or anything. You know what I mean? From a moral standpoint, you don't share the same uh, ideas and so forth. But like you just said, you got to separate the art. You got to separate the product from the person who created it. And f folks who can't do that, I just, I don't really have much time for. I, I think they're ridiculous. I think that they're liars. I think that they're weak. I think that they are the type of people who should not be in any form of, of leadership 
at all that's, in life that's bold. because these folks will lead you down the well i i mean it you know because yeah. they're gonna lead you down paths that don't make sense it's like dude i don't have a clue the the creator of coke i don't have a clue what his politics were i don't i don't have a clue about wh who he liked and didn't like or what he did who he killed or he did and killed and, and all that good stuff and i don't care i just want a coca-cola you know what i mean it's like we we, we got to separate the product from the person who created it we can't just sit here and 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 be so fragile about every little thing or you're never going to consume anything on tv or in a restaurant or whatever you know take yeah. that shirt off right now whoever you know walt disney was a racist you know what i yeah. mean so it's like give me a break yeah. So no, I don't. Vince McMahon's a terrible guy, of and course. Yeah, he and yeah, I fund hundred dollars a month into that motherfucker's uh, pocket. His family, absolutely, absolutely. And I'll keep doing it. What do I care? You know what I mean? I'm entertained by the product that they produce. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> and and is, as soon as I'm not entertained, they get nothing. So there it yeah. is. Is there anything in the documentary you missed that you wish they touched on? Not necessarily. I, I think, in all honesty, I, I think it was done right. That that documentary was not for people who pay attention to the inside of pro wrestling. That was for people who are casuals. That was for the Netflix audience to introduce them to who WWE has been and give them a glimpse of what it is today because Raw is going to be on Netflix coming in, in January. So for those reasons, I think that it did what it was supposed to do. I'm not looking for a final chapter i'm not looking for closure on anything because it's all evolving this this lawsuit or multiple lawsuits are still in its infancy we're nowhere near where we're going to know for sure what happened so i'm okay with what that documentary was yeah me too me too